Hi folks, welcome to my bit retro journal. Um, today I'm at sort of at a weird angle uh, because um, if you don't know what this is, this is actually a, uh, a ZX microdrive uh, that I recently got um, that actually goes with um, the Spectrum. Um, and this is the ZX uh, interface one that actually hooks to the back of the Spectrum. And so I've actually been um, working with the particular microdrive. Now I got them separately. I got the ZX Interface One for a very reputable individual on the Facebook uh, Sinclair Sales Group, but I got the um, the microdrive on eBay, and it was like fifty dollars of and um, pretty good shipping. And I got it, and when I when it came in, it came with um, the microdrive and a cable. And it's this cable right here. And it was, uh, I had to actually take this cable apart. So this is the original Sinclair cable. And it was just filled with blue um, corrosion. And in fact, one side, I had to take each pin out and actually scrape it because it had gotten all the way into the pins. And so I was able to fix the cable and, and I was able to verify that it worked by using my V drive, um, which is uh, right here. Uh, and was able to get this cable to work. Um, but the microdrive itself had some issues as well. I had to replace the motor, um, and I have a couple of spare ones. This is actually another one that I, I have, uh, and I, I have to think about whether I want to try to replace that, but I replaced it with another one that I had, and uh, that improved things. Um, in fact, I switched them back and forth just to make sure that uh, the motor was in either problem. So one, some of the other things I've done is and you can kind of see um in this uh that there are two capacitors right here and here that i've replaced and then there is um these ceramic capacitors one here and there's one down there those were actually um uh so there's a, a bite the light uh refurbish um set of instructions on the web um by bite the light and they recommend that you add these uh, ceramic caps they're um 100 picofarad and then uh, the two caps here are originally point, uh, 0.22 and 0.47 microfarads. And, they, and, and it says you can just replace them with two one microfarad caps, which I did. And that improved things, um, uh, allowing it to um, to format. Now, on the spectrum, it was basically formatting originally either 0K to maybe six seven or eight or even 15 or 20k but it was very inconsistent even after i replaced the motor um but once i put these caps on i think on on the zx interface i've been able to get 84k and they say you're supposed to admit we get 85k so it's still not perfect but 95k is kind of the max you get on these anyway um so i was able to get 84k and i was able to save and and, and load uh, basic programs so the ULA chip seems to be okay. Hooking it to my QL has been another story though, because um, now I finally got, um, you see you have a piece of paper wedged in here. Um, I tried a whole bunch of micro drives. I got this one to finally at least give me a directory listing. So if I do dir mdv3, you can see, um, that's why I'm giving the, the long wide angle. As you can see that it actually gives you a directory listing, but Unfortunately, that's it. If I want to go copy uh, MDV3, let's say stdio.h, which is a very small program. Uh, it's a very small file, I should say it's not a program. To console, so this is usually one good way to test this. This will just spin indefinitely. It's, it's, um, it's able to see the header but yeah it'll just give you a bad or changed medium uh, it, it's just not able to uh, to to read anything on this i've tried can i've tried all sorts of things uh, copy um you know i, I wedge the paper sometimes uh, wiggling that but and um i've had the cover off on most of this but um i i, I think it's still a, a perhaps a motor speed issue um or yeah i don't know it's been a little frustrating um broken uh, C to console. So any, anything that, I, you know, these are all uh, text files. And it's just going to keep giving me the same error. 
Um, at least they got the directory listing, which took a while to get. Um, this is I have one other cartridge that where it just is able to read that it, its name is whatever, but it, it'll tell me it's a it's a bad medium. Whereas here, uh, it actually was able to get at least a directory listing. But yeah, it's it's not there's something wrong with with the drive, and I think it could be the motor. So one thing I might try is I still want to run a few tests, and I want to see if this motor is any good. Unfortunately, um, I don't have my soldering iron here. I have it at uh, the office, and also I, uh, my 3-in-1 oil. So I think I will try to replace yet another motor to see if that has any impact, um, because this one really spins nicely. So it might be... I have plenty... I have you know two other um, extra rubber rollers, which they say to replace, but the rubber roller on there is actually pretty good. Um, and like I said, it, it just it's just struggling to um, um, read any sort of information off of the drive, off of the QR. Now, uh, what I will try, I'll try one more thing and uh, I let this spin a little bit more. I, I have this cartridge, which I've been formatting. Um, yeah, so it didn't. Um, I've been formatting this cartridge on my Spectrum and I get about 84, 85K. Um, um, I can try to format it to see if maybe if this can format it on this drive, um, you know, maybe. Uh, so let me see if I can't take this one out. Uh, let's take this sheet of paper, little piece of paper out. It gives it a little, makes it wiggle less. So this is the one that it can kind of read the header information from. But what I want to see, and again, I'm, I'm eventually going to move the camera because I want to show you the ZX interface one with the micro drive but i just wanted to play a little bit with the ql to see if i can get this to work at all so this and i really felt that this i find that uh music cassettes have a really good felt that works well not every cassette felt works but uh, the the music ones tend to be you know and if i'm not interested in the particular music so you got to be careful that uh, it's in there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to form that MDV3 I'll call it blank and I'm going to hold this down just make sure that yeah like it yeah, I guess sometimes it'll get skewed but we'll know right away um, if like if this could actually format then maybe this these drives could see that format and at least it would show me that it's working somewhat but yeah, so you get a lot of so the the issue with the um, with the um, QL is that um, if the micro drives are fall below a certain amount of sectors, it just is a failed format. Turns out on the ZX interface, that's not the case. You can actually format <laughs> like I was formatting one or two K, so that was kind of interesting. But let's uh, actually let's put the sheet of paper back in here to see if. It's just an alignment issue, but so there's all sorts of things you can do with these drives, but for the most part, um, you know, like I said, I'm getting it to work with, uh, oh, this one's a fat one. I'm getting it to work with the, the ZX Interface 1, getting about 83, 84K. Now, I haven't tried how, how much of that is actually good or bad sectors, but at least it's formatting it that way. But I want to try this one more time. MDV3, let's call it something different, new maybe. Yeah. And again, I'm, I'm using my V drive cable uh, as opposed to the original one, just because it makes better connections. Um, I think this does work, but uh, since I, I'm not 100% sure how well that drive works, I, I don't want to have a bunch of things wrong with it. But yeah, so this is, and just to, um, Just make sure this actually can format. So let's put it in here. Uh, uh, format. MD, oops. Two. Call it blank again. And sometimes after formatting on this, um, it has trouble formatting on, 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 on these drives, although I've been able to 
after a few times it'll it'll reformat. I'm not going to format this a bunch of times. I'm just going to see if it actually uh, works this one time and uh, gives me. Usually I get about 215 sectors, and I just want to see if it gives me those sectors again. Um, yeah. So again, so it's sort of in this mode of failing now, and uh, uh, I've been abusing this one. But let's try this drive. Um, and the one untitled. These are all the names I give blank drives. And we'll see if, um, again, I, I've had this fail format a bunch of times and eventually I get it back to formatting to about 215 sectors. So, yeah, so right now it's sort of in this, uh, it doesn't want to format. And, um, yeah, sometimes it just needs uh, a couple of tries. I wish uh, the QL had a last, um, well, there's one way to do this is you just do this. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't have a, a previous command, but if you do this, then um, just run it. And um, RUN is quicker to type than that command. Um, like I said, I've been able to refurbish it at times, but it may, yeah, at line one format failed. Uh, yeah. It's got a good felt on there, is it? Uh, yeah, no, it's in pretty good shape. So, and I just cleaned the heads and everything, so it shouldn't be that. But sometimes you can reposition it too. Um, let's try it again. I'm gonna prop it up here. There's also sometimes an alignment issue, but uh, let's see if this will do it. And generally, if you can get it to format once, then you can get it to format a whole bunch of times. I don't know the magic of micro drives. Uh, yeah, so it's it's definitely. Um, I mean, I've been kind of banging this drive a lot, so I, I'm not surprised that uh, it's having trouble. Um, the joys of micro drives. Um, I mean, I've been using this a lot to format it on the ZX interface, uh, so I, I might have. Um, killed it uh, a bunch so uh, but I had done this before and I was able to get it to format on this again so edit to one let's do two um yeah I would like to see it format at least one successfully but not guaranteed because I've been hitting this micro drive for so much and uh, yeah, if it just hits under a certain number of, if it goes long enough, it's a good sign, but I still hasn't hit that point. Just needs to go long enough to get the format. Uh, still not there. Oh, there we go, 27 out of 231. So like I said, um, yeah, so, Sometimes it just needs a, a good format. Uh, of course, it's not reading it right away. Oh, no, there it is, yeah, 2.5. So I've gotten it to... Um, uh, again, let's see if... Usually the OneDrive has been the one that's done better. Now that it's formatted, uh, let's actually... Um, So I was able to see it. Uh, let's see what this does. If it's going to fail or if it's going to format it. Um, lost about 5k. Could be just from hitting it on this thing so much that yeah, you end up just destroying the tape. Lots of wear and tear, but um, we'll see. Um, should fail about now. Yeah, that's about that's about the amount of time it needs to fail 
But sometimes, again, you can refurbish these things. There's, the reason I'm lifting it off in the corner is that there's an alignment issue in this particular drive to begin with. Um, and uh, it requires to unsolder some of the pins and rebent them. I just haven't been wanting to do that since I don't use my micro drives all that much. But I found that if I lift the corner up, sometimes this has a, a some success and it hasn't gotten past the format field yet. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so there's 212. So that's getting close to what I was kind of getting uh, in the... the MDV1, yeah. So like I said, um, you can refurbish these things. Um, yeah, do 10 out of 212. I've had uh, 215, so it's actually not so bad. I'm, I'm gonna stop formatting this, but so again, uh, give you a little bit of insight of how to play with these things. But, um, and unfortunately, if I try to load it in this and read it, I don't think it's gonna read it. Uh, Oops, that's bad. Yeah. Gotta be careful how you put this in. Yeah. So let's try D I R M D V three. All right, like I said, I'm gonna do a better angle here. Okay, let's see what this does. Uh turns out if I push it in this direction it does a little better. But again, the misalignment is all these drives and, and this being perhaps having a bad motor, I don't hold up my hopes that this is going to do anything other than uh, spin for a long time. But, um, at least, oh, <laughs> so, now, so now we have a working drive. Uh, that's funny. Save MDV3. Sometimes you just take, so the fact that this formatted and this can save it, that's that's a, a new step um, uh, um, format. That's called format. Format bass. Uh, yeah. Let's see if it can actually save it. Uh, none of this is guaranteed, but I, it was able to read its format. So that's a positive. Um, it's not a very big file, so it's having trouble. But at this point, it would already have stopped. So um, you. Having used micro drives for many years, especially in the 90s, you get really to know uh, their idiosyncrasies. So I, again, I think this is not proper behavior for micro drive um, because the motor here is not so good. Um, and I'll show you what it should look like. I'm going to save it on this one. Just let it go through its paces. Sometimes what it does is it, fortunately, it takes like seven seconds to go all the way through and then it has to find that sector again, and if it's missing it or it's missing it, I mean, this is this should be one sector of saving because it's like one line of program, but it's even struggling with that, so that's not good. It's picking a sector and it's not working. It's not able to read it. Uh, I guess I should push it in this direction. There we go. Yeah, so I'll just tell you that there's a new or bad or changed medium. Um, I don't think it actually did anything. MTV. But still, the fact that it was able to read... Um, well, no, yeah, well, the the other untitled one was actually the same, so, but, uh, uh, uh now it's having trouble reading it. Uh, again, make sure that it's... Ah, <sighs> beautiful micro drives. I, as frustrating as this is, they are kind of fun, and, uh, and again, this is this is a mechanical issue, not a uh, uh, medium issue. So once I fix this, um, yeah, so it can't find it. Again, I found it once, but if I again, if I stick it in here, it should actually find it. Make sure that sees that, and if I save. MDV1 uh, format pass. Oopsie. And you'll see that it's going to stop here in a second. It'll go at least seven seconds. It better stop. <laughs>
There we go. Yeah. That's kind of what you expect. Yeah, so it's saved. And now just to show you that it's not just one drive. These this is a better drive. Um, this is the one that's misaligned. But I can get both of them to work, so it's not the worst in the world. I'll need at least seven seconds to get the top of the sector and then seven seconds to yeah, there we go. And it can read it so uh, copy. UV2 format. To con. And it'll yeah, I just read it to the console. And again, unfortunately, not this one. So um I don't, I've also gotten advice from folks on the QL forum that formatting on this, uh, these can't format QL drives, but they should be able to read them. So don't set the motor speed slightly different. So uh, let's see what we can get with MDV3. And you might go, why, why on earth, you know, you have a V drive. Why do you want to do that? I really like magnetic medium. I think these are kind of cool. And I know they get a bad rep. You know, I hate the, uh, uh, trope of this is why the QL failed. That's kind of cool technology, I think. Miniature 8-track tapes. You can't beat that. Uh, I think I need to... You know, it's just that this drive right now is misaligned. And with a misaligned drive, just like you could have a, a floppy and a bad motor, it's like having a bad belt. Yeah, it's not going to work. So I'm trying to debug this. What's interesting about this, though, is on the Spectrum, this actually works. Uh, although not great and I haven't really tested each sector out yet just that I can load and save a file um, so the, the other sad part of this is if you notice the way this is done you can't actually use this side of the uh, board this is just for the next drive that this poor little drive actually has to face in the wrong direction because on the spectrums they have the interface on this side uh, and on the 128k spectrums whereas on the QL they put it on the on the on the right side and so the micro drives for the QL actually have this board flipped around uh inverted so um yeah it found it didn't yeah it it, it, it knew it was called new but it just couldn't read it so okay um so what I want to do now uh to give you a better camera angle is I'm going to um stop tinkering with my QL on this micro drive. All right, let me um, re-situate the camera and I'm gonna basically connect um, my spectrum. I just wanna make sure I don't drop. My spectrum with my ZX interface and uh, set the camera up right in front of it so that you can see this beautiful beast of, um, and this cool interface. Um, all right. I've got my spectrum set up and the ZX interface one is uh, hooked to the back uh, connector slot and it's plugged into the video signal. Um, I don't have my microwave hooked in yet. So this is actually, again, it's in pieces. So this is the plate and I haven't kept, I've kept the, kept the cover off just while I'm testing. And so this cable goes on the side of the um, interface one uh, right here. Perfect. Uh, okay, and then just plug it in. This is my nine volt power supply. Goes in here, and voila, we get. Uh, so we have a little bit of interference pattern, but uh, yeah, I've hooked it to uh, other uh, monitors, and they've been better. Now, I haven't been as quite as close. I don't know if the proximity to them, to the TV, makes any difference although it's composite so i'm not sure why it would um in any case um here's um the micro drive this is the one that i had formatted to uh, 212 sectors so i'm going to put it in here and let's try to format it it's obviously not formatted to um yeah it's, this is not really designed to have the top off so you just want to be careful that you don't break anything <clears throat> There you go. So that's in there. And then the way to format it is you're going to go boom, E, format, and then it's microdrive uh, one. 
and then you give it a name blank oops and then hit return and it's going so it usually does that that pattern and then it it stays blank for a while uh, and then it uh, so I think it goes runs through the entire tape once and um, then runs through it a second time and picks apart the sectors. And it's, yeah, so this is what you want to see continuously uh, as much as possible because the more you see that, the more it's going to format. And so yeah, I'm not sure if that was good or not. Uh, it might pick a few more apart and then yeah so we'll see we now we go e cat catalog one <laughs> and not sure what we're gonna get out of this we might get um i've been getting 83 84 was the max on this drive we'll see what we get this time 77 yeah it's not bad let's try it one more time again formatting a few times is helpful i've gotten really good with this um this is drive one. Um, we're going to go blank. Blank. And close it. But yeah, um, um, you saw that I replaced the the caps the ones up here um i should uh, let me show you a picture of what i actually had to do because i couldn't you can't take the board off of the plastic so i actually protected it by wrapping some uh, foil on it and you can see that that foil kind of protects the whole thing so i just uh, put my soldering iron on, the, on that end of things and uh, um yeah got them out and put the new ones in the other ones um the other ones on on this side i just did from the top but uh, so it's qu it's quite a uh, quite a little um, uh, piece of work to try to get in, to, to get all the caps back on because it's such a small space. But yeah, that worked pretty well. So uh, we'll see what this gives me. Seventy nine. Yeah. So I'm, I'll probably do I'll do one more and then uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can get to back to eighty. Um, for whatever reason, the more you format sometimes, the better it does. It's called untitled this time. Untitled. And uh, close it up and let it go. By the way, when I got this um, and I opened this up, you know what I found in there? Yep. Actual bug in my micro drive. <laughs> Zoom out again. All right, let's see how it did. Um, it's finished. So we can go and hopefully we're in the 80s again because I've been getting usually 84 but um, and it goes up every time I format it but hopefully if I'm at, if we're at 82 we'll, we'll call it a day yep 82 um, so if I want to save a program I can type 10 print uh, hello Uh, space quote semicolon is there uh, 20 go to 10 and to save it we would do save and you have to do oops sorry it's uh, the asterisk is so it's asterisk Micro oops. Uh, micro drive one and then again the name we're gonna call it hello uh, I'm sorry we gotta do two L's And that will save it onto the drive and then when we're done we can do a catalog of it and this has been working pretty um, well so i know that the reading and the writing is working yeah so now if i go cat it's going to show the the drive 
uh, the, the, well, it's going to show hello as one of the things on the drive. There it is. And if I do a new a list, and if I do a load, again, start for whatever reason, and then microdrive. I don't know why the star is there. It's kind of weird syntax. Microdrive one, and then you give it the name of the program. And it should load it. Oh, run. Oops. Thought it was on the QL here for a second. There it is. It loaded. No list. Boom. Yeah. So it works. I still think it's not m m optimal. I did get a, a when I ordered this, um, uh, I got a book with it. And uh, let me go grab that for a sec. Um, it's uh, by Andrew Pinnell, and uh, it's Mastering Your ZX Microdrive. And in here, he actually states that he always gets a minimum of 85K, but no more than 95K. So I feel like there's still something, um, you know, I feel like there's still something wrong with my microdrive. So, yep, that's where I am with it. So um, I'm going to try to replace the motor to see how that works. Oh. Uh, there seems to be some funky stuff going on. Uh, can we? Oh, wow. That's, uh, well, okay. Let's reboot. Is that potentially, um, oh, that's a continuous, uh, so. So I believe what that is, is the edge connector. Oh no, it's still doing it. Hold on. Let me see if, um, because I haven't screwed the edge connector in. I'm wondering if I need to clean the uh, edge connector to get this to work. Let's see if that does it. Uh, Boom. Yeah, I bet this is the same as the um, famous uh, RAM wobble that we got on the ZX81. Um, this is the first time I've actually connected something to that. And if I do a load, There's no L run, I don't think. But if I do a, um, I think this this will still work. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. So we're still good. So I think this is uh, uh, because I'm, I haven't connected it. The wobble is causing that weirdness. Ah, this takes me back to my ZX81 days. In any case, um, I'm going to end here. Um, this is already a long video. Um, so I'll do more work on this micro drive to see if I can't get it to work better, especially on the QL. If you have some information on this, if maybe it's working fine and it's not supposed to work on the QL, please let me know. Otherwise I'll be chasing my tail, but I still think the motor could be better. Uh, but I'll end here. Um, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.